Assalamualaikum and good evening ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Future Career Talk. This Future Career Talk is organized by Faculty of Science Student Association University of Putra Malaysia known as FASA UPM. First of all, we would like to welcome the respected advisor, Associate Professor Dr. Yap Wing Fan and Dr. Nur Hazrin Zainuddin, Mr. Putra Arifaika Rusli, Director of Future Career Talk and our honorable guest for tonight, Mr. Kumar Sanmutian and Mr. Amir Shaifuddin as our panelists from Harta Lega. Before we proceed to our agenda, allow me to introduce myself. I am Ain Fakia, your moderator for tonight. For your information, this feature career talk is held for two days. Starting from yesterday, we had our panelists from Grad 1. For today's session, we will, we will be having our panelists from Harta Lega. You will be able to ask any question related to the topic during the Q&A session after they have finished with their important insights and sharing. All right, before we begin, let me introduce our panelists for tonight. The first panelist with us today is Mr. Kumar Sanmutian, the Senior Manager Production of Harta Lega, and Mr. Amir Sharifuddin, the Senior Executive Resources of Harta Lega. Hi, Mr. Kumar and Hi, Mr. Amir. How are you, How are you tonight? Hi. We are good. Hi, Hi. Uh, We are good, yes. All right. Um, so, um, before we start, can I ask a little bit about both of your background? Because maybe our audience are interested about our panel for tonight. Who should start first? <laughs> maybe. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, boss. I start first. Uh, hi, uh, viewers. Hi, semua. Uh, my name is Amir. Um, I'm working in Hartalega as a senior executive in human resources. My background, my my uh, my study, my background was in MassCom, um, and I started my career in Hartalega in 2017 uh, as employee engagement and communication executive, and now I have moved to a senior executive role uh, for seeing, uh, employer branding and resourcing. All right, thank you, Mr. Amir. How about Mr. Kumar? Hello, hi. I'm, I'm Kumar Raisan. You can address me as Kumar. I have been with Hatta Lega in, uh, for the last two years. I was in Hatta Lega earlier, and then I left it for a short period of time, and I came back to Hatta Lega. Right? So my background, I've always been in the manufacturing. Right? I am known as a rubber technology as well as a, some accounts based. <laughs> all right all right thank you so uh i guess ready for question after question for tonight for him yes, yes. all right okay all right without wasting any time i would like to ask the first question to both of our panelists as we all know most of our audience for tonight is from the undergrad students especially those in final years who will soon become a fresh graduate so, what are the criteria that the employers search within the fresh graduates other than a good academic achievement? So, um, maybe Mr. Amit could answer first or Mr. Kumar? Okay, uh, let me just start first lah, okay? All right. Um, so, you are, see, you are looking at <clears throat> what are the criteria that we're looking in, in fresh graduates nowadays, right? Okay, I would like to uh, quote, uh, Google, okay, uh, a very big company, you know Google, uh, the former CEO Eric Schmidt said that when they find a candidate, they are not looking those candidates who possess only knowledge, but they are, they prefer the one who keeps learning, they prefer the one who, who shows the ability to learn, okay. So uh, for me, in my personal opinion, uh, if we want to find a, a, an ideal candidate, we, we, are, we prefer those who have the growth mindset. Meaning to say, uh, when you portray yourself, you are very versatile, okay, in, in, in the ever-changing environment that we have nowadays, you know, technology keep coming, uh, the way we work keep changing. Uh, in 2019, uh, we, in 2020, sorry, suddenly we have to work from home, yeah? Many, many of us, many of us employees, we have to start to work from home. So, kalau you tidak very versatile in, 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 you know, adapting to such environment, you are kind of getting left behind. You are kind of very complacent. You are kind of start, start growing. So, as an employer, I believe most employers, the criteria yang paling penting is to have the growth mindset in yourself. So, that bila you masuk, 
bila you join the, the, the company, you will grow together with the company. All right, thank you, Ms. Amir. How about Mr. Kumar? What is your opinion? Um, basically, it is depending on the graduates themselves, right? It is not what the employees are looking for. How are they going to present themselves? Employers, I think they are always open to fresh graduates, but we, are, we need to see what are the graduates looking for. It is not only academic. What are the other co-curriculum activities that are involved, whether they are doing some social services, right? And um, uh, they're taking up some other courses as a part-time, learning something new. You see, it's a, it's a continuous learning environment. So we are looking into uh, uh, potential candidates who are continuously exploring and learning new things, right? So in Artalaga's con uh, um, context, right, we are always looking into employees who want to grow, who want to upgrade themselves. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kumar and Ms. Amin. So in short, that uh, what are the employees that should within the fresh graduate is uh, the ability to go within the fresh graduate itself. Am I right? Yes, yeah, right. All right, all right. Thank you. Okay, now let us proceed to the second question. Uh, nowadays, most employers tend to choose employee based on working experience uh, in those related fields. Uh, nowadays, it become a talk in the town. So, in Mr. Kumarasan's opinion, uh, well, so ask, how do fresh graduates who do not have any working experience in those fields convince the employers to hire them without the working experience as they are uh, freshly graduates? So, you see, num number one, I think the graduates cannot be choosy about what, what job they get, right? Um, you have no experience. So basically, you want to get something to start off with. Of course, you are looking into something which is related to what you have studied. But you can always explore, expand your experience, right? Like I said just now, my, my background is rubber technology. My ground background is also some accounts, right? So if you are... Uh, your mindset is towards only one subject, you cannot grow. So in order for you to be marketable, you have to look into other areas as well. If you're a chemist, suddenly you cannot end up like that. a scientist who sit and then start finding new things, right? You also have to have the business concept. You need to have uh, an explanation how to market your product, right? You need to do some research to see um, what are these applications for? It's not just finding something, but it's useful to the humankind. So these are the things that the, the fresh graduates have to learn and show to the employers. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kumar. Uh, okay. Uh, proceed to the next question. It also related to the previous question. I would like to propose this question to Mr. Ame. In your opinion, which one should be prioritized by the fresh graduate nowadays? starting to work upon graduation to obtain the working experience or continuing the studies to another level such as master and PhD? Okay, <clears throat> that question is very tricky. Um, actually, uh, it depends on the graduates himself, themselves, okay? Uh, because uh, some people are not in the situation where they can further study to another level. Some students might have the leisure, I mean, the, the, the privilege to further, but some students, you know, are the situation and they want to help their family, they want to start, you know, uh, building life. So these type of students might quickly uh, want to enjoy the salary and, you know, give back to the family. So it's actually, bagi I, the graduate, you need to know where you are. Okay, you need to know what you want to do and you, you need to know what is your path that you want to venture into. Once you set that up, once you know your goal, then for sure it will come naturally within you. Okay, imagine eh, kalau you cannot afford to further your study, but you choose to further your study. It will be a burden financially for you in future. Betul? Okay? Uh, but so, kalau you have the privilege to further, why not go ahead? Tapi kalau you are in the positions that you need uh, a job, because kita tahulah sekarang kan, uh, you study pun, you kadang-kadang use the student loan and stuff, and you will need to pay such. I was in the 
in that position as well. So yeah, it's actually depending on how the situation at, at, that, at that point of time. All right, thank you. So basically, uh, as a student or fresh graduate, you need to know yourself whether you should go start working, uh, start working at early or just continuing your study. So I would like to ask uh, the second, uh, the third question, which also related. Is it okay for fresh graduates to just start working in the field that is totally not related to their field at all? At all? So, what is uh, your both of your opinion? I think there's no harm going into a different field. But don't go too far away from your field. You can find something which is quite close or related to your field. All right? Um, if you're too far away from the field, then what happens is your your whatever you have studied and you have, you have learned, you may not be able to apply fully. All right? There must there should be some connection between what you study and what you want to go. And the second thing you have to look into, what is your ambition? What's the student's ambition? Whatever they're taking up, is it going to lead to their ambition? They may have a plan five years, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. So whatever step they're taking now should be looking towards that 15 years plan or five years plan. Whether the job they're taking now is going to lead them towards that or not. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I, I very I like these questions whether or not uh, graduates should venture to a different in their study. Okay, for me to, to go into these questions, is this kita, kita be realistic? It is a tough time for everybody now. Yeah, job market is right. Okay, so and then you can think about with this technology, with this new era, there are so many things. There are so many things that you can do to survive. I actually was inspired, if you know Kairul Amin, the, the famous history, uh, content creator, okay? Uh, he had a lot of engineering graduates, if I'm not mistaken, from US, and look what he do now. He is a content creator, okay? And I think uh, everybody, uh, kalau you guys follow him, he just launched his sambal yesterday, and the sale was 10,000 within a day, okay? I mean, he started very hard to achieve to that level after so many years of creating content and he achieved to that level, okay? So what I'm trying to say, kalau you tengok his recent Instagram posting, he did mention in, in venturing, in, in, in setting up his business, he actually used whatever knowledge that he studied before this, operations management, uh, he, he learned how to manage, you know, all the stocks, uh, and then, you know, uh, all the uh, macam mana nak expect for kas kira untung and then uh, planning the business daripada uh, making, eh, daripada, daripada the process buat sambal up until nak pergi delivery. So, all the knowledge that you study at university, you have to go to, macam contoh, you belajar accounting, you jangan like set close-minded, okay, accounting firm. Okay, you jangan contoh, you have to be very open-minded to what come ahead to you. Macam I, I was the best of graduates and master I studied, uh, my mind was macam another, my, my, my classmates, we were only thinking of uh, all the gas industry, banking industry. Little did I know that Malaysia has many industries that are actually very booming. Just example, global. So when I enter Harta Liga, that opened my eyes that my skills as a math long graduate can also be leveraged here in the manufacturing sector. Nampak tak? So you jangan, my advice to all future graduates, you don't limit your choices. Study uh, apa yang, apa industry that, that might be suitable for you. What are the rules? Because there are many rules, yeah? Uh, engineering saja dah banyak role eh? ada production engineer lah, ada process engineer lah, ada uh, utility engineer lah. so there are many roles, so study which roles yang you want to venture into, so once you know once you understand the role, then you can directkan your application to the right path itu yang uh, my advice to all of you Alright, so in short, uh, for undergrads to not be so close-minded and be open-minded and try to uh, do, do not limit yourself. All right. Okay. Uh, can we proceed to the to, to the next question? Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, we are all aware that the whole world nowadays is affected by the pandemic crisis of COVID nineteen. So the job offered by companies and organization are now limited. Also, the competitions among the fresh graduate themselves becomes tougher. 
the question is, do fresh graduate salaries able to compete with other job seekers to get themselves hired for a job in this current situation? So what are the uh, efforts that can be done by the fresh graduates to make themselves marketable during this time? So that's the question. Okay. Um, I mean, this is a known fact, right? In, in the market, there are a lot of people who are losing jobs. And then, of course, the employers are actually looking at those experienced people so that they don't have to go through the trainings and so on. Now, whether the, the fresh graduates are going, how are they going to market themselves? How are, you going, how are they going to um, build themselves so that they can also portray certain amount of experience or knowledge that can be considered by the employers? You see, now, learning is not limited. The internet is actually has opened white doors to everybody, all right? So you could have come from a, uh, a chemistry background, and let's say you want to learn about business, you just go and Google, you can go into LinkedIn. There are a lot of videos and courses that you can pick up, right? So this is where you are building knowledge. Then when you are meeting some potential employers, right? What are you doing? You're selling yourself, saying that I have this knowledge. I have not applied it, but I have this knowledge, which I think can contribute to the organization. And when the organization is weighing these two and looking at a, at, a, at a fresh graduate who is taking the initiative to learn something new, that's a plus point. So there is a, how you want to market, whether you, you are going to market yourself as a potential candidate for the employees is depend on individual. As a fresh graduate, you have to work extra hard, no doubt. All right, continuous learning. That's what I would suggest. All right, thank you. Mr. How about Mr. Amir? Okay, um, bagi I pula, uh, fresh graduate first, you need to know what type of job that you can apply. Okay, I I think um, recently I go through my Twitter account and I noticed this one fresh graduate lah. I think it's fresh graduate. They tweet. Um, Majikan sekarang bila nak cari pekerja, cari yang experience lima tahun. I'm a fresh graduate. How can I get that five years experience? Okay, first of all, you might actually applying the job to bukan a fresh graduate position. Okay, so fresh graduate, first of all, you need to know dulu which positions are suitable with you. Okay, uh, janganlah cari position yang eight years experience, managerial, ataupun assistant manager, ataupun senior. You should go with keyword junior executive, okay, uh, engineer. This is the fresh graduate punya opening, okay. And sometimes I notice kalau dekat job street, kita akan letak fresh graduates are encouraged to apply. So the pool of candidates within this application, uh, selection dia adalah daripada fresh graduate or maybe one to two years experience, okay. Get this right first. Barulah, then market market you, okay? So market you ni senang je bagi I. Macam Mr. Kumar cakap, I totally agree. You need to sell yourself and you need to know apa yang you boleh give to the employers, okay? Sekarang ni pandemik, uh, susahlah sebab kalau before this, uh, usually fresh graduate, they will sell their internship experience, they can sell their extracurricular activities. So dari situ kita boleh nilai you whether uh, bila you join, for example, eh, you, you join a CSR, charitable uh, activity, social activity. Kita tahu you akan mingle dengan orang, you takkan ada issue to work with people. You see, uh, this, this, this small, actually small activity, sebenarnya kita dah boleh judge your character. So currently, pandemic pula happening. So in LinkedIn, okay, I, I will advise all the graduates out there, kalau you tengok sekarang ni, I really advise you, buka LinkedIn and find a free courses for you to join in. These free courses really helps you, okay? They are kind, you know, there are many white sharing pasal communication, company culture, they talk about presentation skills. So these courses yang akan build your character and build your confidence untuk you kind of imagine what is yang you akan face in the working life. So but working life is not the same as you your student life, okay? So you have to improve yourself you have to figure out a way to show to the employers that you you hunger, you, you want to know. I can beat those with one year experience. Even though I'm a fresh graduate, I have this kind of achievement, I have this kind of involvement that makes me better than another candidate. That is 
the most crucial part for you to sell uh, to the employers. All right, thank you, Mr. Amir and Mr. Kumar for such an insightful answer. So I would like to ask uh, question, uh, what are the things that can be done uh, by students uh, which is currently in your seat to prepare themselves for the future job during this current situation? Uh, the, uh, so for example, do they need to uh, venture themselves into, into co-curricular activities or what, uh, uh, et cetera? So what is your opinion? What do you think about this? I, I will say that we, we all know this is a very difficult time globally, right, to everyone. And um, it is quite challenging to actually take up some extra co-curricular activity where we need to keep social distancing, where we um, try not to mingle around too much with other people. But there are a lot of venues where we can find uh, uh, things to do, right? Online, there are a lot of activities online that you can do, like just like what I may say just now, courses, you can pick up some courses. Um, you can join, you know, they, they even have this Toastmasters Club. I don't know whether you've heard of this, where these are self-development uh, uh, program that is organized for leadership and communication skills. So even the Toastmasters, I think nowadays they are doing it online. You can join the, join those clubs and upgrade yourself. You can find some uh, um, um, social activities done over there, or other, other venues. So keep yourself occupied, doing something, learning something, to show the uh, potential employers that you're not lazy, right? You are there always, you, you want to do something, you want to keep yourself occupied. So this shows the employer that you are an active person. So when we, when we want to hire you, we look at it, whether this person, if I hire, is this person going to contribute to my organization? Is, is Let's say a task is given. Is he going to go beyond what is was asked to do? Or is he just um, do it halfway and stop? So these are the, the small indicators we give to the, to the potential employers. Right? That's, all, that's what I would suggest. All right. Thank you, Mr. What is your opinion? I think uh, Mr. Kumar pretty summed it up very nicely. Do something. Uh, janganlah do Netflix and chill eh, all the time. Jangan. Okay. <clears throat> you you have to venture yourself into something. Um, kalau you notice eh, um, because I think all of the graduates you kita kita suka tengok benda online kan? Kita suka tengok content in YouTube and Instagram. Why not one day create a content? What YouTube channel? Eh, YouTube bayar tau when you achieve one k follower, one k subscribers. There are so many things to do. It's just that you want to do it or not. Are you passionate enough to do or not? Okay. So don't stop giving excuses. Okay. Bangun. Create some, something uh, with your leisure time sekarang ni kan. So with that involvement, with that because throughout the process, you can learn something new. Definitely. And when you learn that something new, it will always open in your mind. Open your mind. And you can dapat a new perspective. That is very important to you when you grow up. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Mr. Amir. So for such, uh, Amir, Mr. Amir and Mr. Kong for such a good tips. All right. We proceed to the next question. Uh, based on both of your experience, what are the preparation needs to be taken by the fresh graduates before attending a job interview session? And is it true that some of our some of our graduates usually demands for higher salary? And what is your advice on this issue? Right. Okay. Um, what I will what I will advise the graduates is don't look at the salary. Yeah, right? salary and perks will come when you start performing. The organization will actually um, compensate accordingly. Right. You are a fresh graduate. You have no experience. You need to gain experience. Get into the uh, the, uh, the job that is offered. Perform to the fullest, right? Learn what is necessary for the job. Do your job. Prove to your bosses, to the organization, saying that you are worthy. You are you are you are worth more than what you are paid for right now. That's how that's how you get yourself uh, paid higher in the future, right? Like I mean, Ami said, right. Your fresh graduate don't hope to come and then say, I want to be a manager. 
you you will definitely fail because you have not gone through the process. Once you start growing in an organization, coming as a fresh employee, gradually upgrading yourself to the next level, you will know how to manage the people who come in later on. So these are all learning processes. <laughs> Back to you. Better. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Ha. Is uh, point is enough. Okay. I know. Uh, salary demand to some people might do that. Okay. First of all, but I, as the fresh graduate, know the average salary of 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 the industry that you venture into. Okay. Um. So, kalau macam contoh kita tahu, oil and gas, uh, they might give you up to 4k for starting salary. Uh, other industry that might be for degree graduates from three to five uh, those employer yang i rasa bagi 1800 untuk degree i think it it tu dah melampau lah eh macam it shouldn't be that way lah you should be responsible employers and give salary according to the market average okay that's one thing itu yang graduates kena faham dulu secondly graduates kena faham is understand the role again macam i cakap first tadi kan Jangan apply untuk position managerial and then you run dekat Twitter, you run thing dekat Twitter, cakap my employers nak cari yang ada experience. Understand the role, understand the requirement, then you akan naturally going in. Uh, and then bila pergi interview, the tips is bagi I, sebab interview tips ni you can find in Google. So many tips about interview kan. Okay? Bagi I senang je dekat interview, be genuine. Be genuine, don't oversell. Bila you be genuine, bila you be honest with your uh, achievement, with your stuff, dia akan naturally senang untuk you uh, cakap dalam interview. Yakin, sebab you yakin, sebab it's about yourself. Okay? Uh, so, uh, you, bila you tend to oversell, kadang-kadang yang you gagap lah sebab you banyak sangat hafal. <laughs> so, bila you banyak sangat hafal, you tend to hantar gagap macam alamat. Semalam hafal apa ni? Uh, okay. So, be genuine. Uh, know your your potential, know your uh, achievement, stick with that. All right, okay. thank you. I would like to add on a little bit on that. I say, so when, when, you, when you go for an interview, when you, you are looking for a job, look for an organization where you have an opportunity to learn. Because an organization where they give you a lot of avenue to learn, right? At the same time, when you go for interview, look for bosses who you can use as your mentor, who you think can coach you and guide you in, in, in and develop you. This is what you should be looking for. Salary, is, I'm not saying it's not important. Everybody needs to survive, right? You have expenses, understood? But don't put too much of emphasis on salary. That's my advice. All right, thank you, Mr. Kumar and Mr. Aradu. So, we proceed to the next question. Other than pandemic nowadays, what are the actual, actual reasons for the increased unemployment rates between the fresh graduates? And what are the things that can be done to overcome this? What is your opinion or take on this, Mr. Kumar and Mr. Aradu? That's a, difficult, a very tough question you're asking. <laughs> 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 The scenario now, even the uh, experienced guys are losing jobs. There are a lot of companies that closed down, right? And you found even small businesses closed down. And uh, there are plenty of uh, opportunity for the employers to choose from, right? There are so many people there that the employer can choose from. So if you were in, 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 the, in the employer's shoe, right? Would you go and get somebody that you think that can contribute to the company or you will go and say that I need to babysit this person where, where I'm putting a lot of effort on this person? Right? Let, let's, be, let's be honest here, right? So, it is tough. It is difficult times. What we can do, like what we have explained earlier, upgrade yourself. Right? Right. All right, thank you, Mr. Omar. How about Mr. Ave? Okay, uh, for me personally, uh, the I mean, even without pandemic, kita tahu kan ramai the graduate, even ramai graduate yang uh, menganggur. Okay, tak ada kerja. For me personally, it's because you quite close-minded. Okay, bila you close-minded, macam kita cakap tadi, uh, Mr. Kumar yang cakap tadi, jangan to think of one path only. Okay, you have to be realistic. 
um, there are thousands of graduates. There are thousands of graduates and berapa ramai yang first class, berapa ramai yang second class upper, okay? So kalau you in the position yang you cannot be choosy, okay? I tidak merendahkan sesiapa, it's just that bagi I, if you are in the position that you cannot choose because some employers do, do kita nak pick the the, the great, great talents kan, kita akan like offer dia. Kita memang nak dia, macam tu kan. So if you are not in the position to choose, why not just do something? I have a classmate who are working in call center and I don't see any any wrong with that, okay? And be, eventually, you will climb your career. Sekarang banyak je tau, career. I mean, I saw at even Speedmark, dia ada macam uh, managerial role, the degree graduates, you groom jadi manager. So, bagi I, kalau you are not in the position to choose, okay, you really want a job rather than you run thing, rather than you, uh, you know, complaining, do something. Upgrade yourself, even even if taking uh, such jobs, I mean, even it's quite different eh, from your path of study, it's different, but you will be all, you will be upgrading yourself for sure because bila you venture into workplace, there are so many things that you're going to learn. And then you know some 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 of my friends even uh, venture into kerja dulu, kumpul modal, and then business. It's so many things you can do actually to survive. Kita human beings, we are so great. Kita we are blessed with uh, minds. Yeah, we have, we can think of what to do to survive. Okay, so just believe in yourself. Go. Jangan tidak tidak. Contoh. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Kumar and Ms. Amirin. So, actually, for uh, fresh graduate students, just don't close your mind and upgrade yourself in this current situation. All right, okay. Uh, we proceed to the next questions. Uh, both our panels are from Harta Lega, and based on my reading, Harta Lega offers internship programs all year round. Uh, I believe maybe some of our guests are interested by the internship program. So, does this internship program still available for students despite this pandemic outbreak? And can you give some tips on the internship program at Harta Lega? Okay, uh, I think uh, let me answer that now since I'm in the human resource uh, department. We do open internship uh, applications. Uh, the way you want to apply is by email your application to grip at hartalega.com.my. Uh, yes, we do accept uh, intern even during this pandemic. It's just that we need your letter and stuff lah. And then uh, I think you need to do your COVID test before you coin in. But personally, I have to be, I have to warn you guys, just nak beritahu awal-awal, because of the pandemic, the applications volume are very high. So you are competing with many other universities in Malaysia. And uh, places, kita tak boleh lah nak offer internship placement sampai seribu. <laughs> so we only have tak banyak internship placement. So we do, we do accept internship in short, but uh, the competition for you guys is very high. We are very sorry if we cannot entertain to reply to all of you. Okay, we are very sorry for that. Uh, but know that uh, we, uh, our recruiters, trying our best to actually screen every application and shortlist uh, the best candidates. All right, thank you, Mr. Ame. How about Mr. Kumar? What is your, your opinion about that? Um, actually, Ame has answered the question because that comes under the HR's purview, All right? right. So it's, it's the same thing, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, related, also related to the uh, Harta Liga, is there any backend or opportunity for our French graduates to apply their first job in the company? Yes, there are a lot. You can ask Mr. Kumar. He dah interview berapa banyak fresh graduate. Yeah, kita memang open. Our vacancy memang ada untuk fresh graduate. Okay, kalau you open our job street ke, even our career side, yeah you can nampak ada position yang fresh graduates are welcome to apply. Few of my friends, even from UPM, yeah, um, they join in as fresh graduate juga. Okay, your seniors lah maknanya. Eh. So, we do accept. Jangan risau. Harta Liga tidak meletakkan syarat. Fresh graduate need to have five years experience. Tidak. <laughs> Jadi, makanya, uh, do apply. But dapat ke tak dapat tu lagi cerita eh. So, you apply. And then, Ingat tips yang kita share tadi lah, understand the roles, understand the the position and understand Harta Liga first. You tengok dulu, you janganlah apply, you raining your application tau. 
go to our website, understand us first. Uh, apa our value and stuff? Is this the right company for me? Apply. And then cater your application to the positions, to the company. In short, uh, dengan izin Tuhan, yeah, you will uh, you will succeed with your application. Thank you for yeah, such a good tip. Just add on oh. to that. Uh, we have hired many fresh graduates and we have many fresh graduates where they have grown with the organization. They have been promoted multiple levels, multiple times. And some of them are even holding assistant and manager's positions. Right? So there's always opportunity to fresh graduate in Hatha Lega, especially. <laughs> All right, thank you for such a good tips. Maybe our audience can take the tips for the future. All right, uh, so maybe I could ask the next question. Um, regards to the current situation, uh, which sectors are considered as the most challenging sectors for graduates to apply for a job? Uh, either the government or the private sector? So, I think it's tough on both sides, right? Um, if you all have seen in the past, for last few years, there were a lot of jobs which was uh, put on hold by the government themselves. They have not hired a lot of positions. And if 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 you have seen, even some doctors who have graduated graduated as doctors, they did not get placing. There were many unemployed doctors, right? So and the doctors were also employed as um, on, on a contract basis. At the end of the contract, that's it. They don't have any job. So it was tough on the government even before the pandemic. Now it is even tougher. Right? So certain sectors in the government, yes, they are open. They, they are hiring people, but some sectors they have closed up. Similarly to the private sectors, when uh, with the recent pandemic, where a lot of uh, companies have closed down. And uh, some of the a lot of companies have also shrunk their operation. Definitely, they will lose the, the the vacancies that they had. Less being hired, All right? So, it I think it applies to both sides. It is quite difficult nowadays. Yes, betul. I agree dengan Mr. Kumar because you know government the process to get into point you have to. Jawab exam SPA dulu, and then you either like fitness test, and then ni, and then I think both sector macam kalau in private sector kalau you nampak tourism is affected, airlines is affected. I was I was actually very sad to see my friends who are working in airlines industry kan hari tu I think uh, Firefly eh, uh, uh, the trench kan. So it's 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 hard. It's it's a tough time for everybody. So be realistic lah. Eh? Be realistic and and see how plan your move, <laughs> strategize your next move. All right, thank you, Mr. Amir and Mr. Kumar Sad. Now we are moving to the most awaited part, which is the Q and A session from the audience. For those who have questions, you can simply type your questions in the comment section, and I will read out the questions to our panel. All right, we will wait for the questions. All right. The question is coming, yeah. All right, the first question from Chris Arif Haika, we see. Is it okay for graduates to become a full-time YouTuber rather than searching for jobs that are related to their bachelor degrees? Right. Prince what is your opinion? My opinion, Prince Arif, uh, is if you want to choose that path, do sepenuh hati, but wholeheartedly, do it with passion. Okay, kalau you were background, example, you engineering background and your content in YouTube is related to engineering background. Kan you nampak dekat YouTube banyak kan, ada content pasal creator lah, ada orang bagi review pasal uh, rumah, ada orang bagi review pasal handphones. So if you have an engineering background and you want to use that knowledge to create a content, do wholeheartedly, do with passion. Okay. Um, remember uh, phenomenon uh, Kak Sugu, eh? Sugu Pavitra, cooking. Dia punya cooking saja kat YouTube tu, dia boleh dapat icon award even and also dia boleh dapat income, generate income. So I think kalau you boleh dapat generate income from YouTube and if that is your passion and you want to do it, do it. Jangan toleh. But if you 
if you don't feel that path, don't push. I mean push lah. Tapi you know, you 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 get my point tak? Maknanya jangan buat separuh jalan. Kalau you nak buat, you have to do it. Because success won't come overnight, okay? Kalau you will guys watch uh, this one Korean drama, Start Up, okay? Uh, I suka gunakan contoh-contoh yang, yang related to the students ni, okay? Start Up, okay. Um, you see uh, these uh, three boys kan, they are not set, set, set up the company tu. It took them how many years? Baru company dia orang go macam successful. Itu pun after being ventured. I mean, the guy, I think nama dia Dolsan, right? Uh, dia coding skills, eh? And then the girl tell me, dia ada communication skill, dia ada presentation skill. So when they uh, combine and then the company, successful. So you nampak tak macam as long as you have passion to it, buat. Jangan uh, jangan uh, ragu-ragu dengan DVU. So kalau you nak buat YouTube and it somehow it's related to what you studied before, why not? You still, jangan limitkan your mind, I study engineer, I have to become an engineer. Don't. In this world, macam-macam you boleh buat. Cairo Ami, apa, a graduate engineer, now jual sambal net. <laughs> Dan sepuluh ribu, habis dalam masa beberapa jam. Siapa kita untuk kata tidak? <laughs> Itu je, saya nak cakap. Yeah. So, so you can actually use your passion, your interest, your your hobby and turn into a career. That is always a possibility. Right? So there is no right or wrong in this, but if you are passionate about it, go ahead and do it. All right. So basically, jangan takut dengan cabaran. So just venture, uh, venture uh, into something that you like and jangan, jangan limitkan diri sendiri. Like once again, uh, through our whole forum, there are many, many times that uh, do not limit yourself. Uh, so okay. All right. Okay. Uh, is there any next question? All right. We have the second question from MPZ. Does different company culture practice affect the performance of new job seekers and how? Um, definitely, company culture plays an important role. Um, and and again, the company culture, you see some, some organization, they don't want to hire fresh graduates. They're always looking for um, um, experienced people. There are organizations that such in the, in, 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 in the country, right? Um, definitely, this kind of uh, uh, culture um, will affect the performance. It will affect the performance of the organization, will affect the growth of the organization, and will also affect the employees that, that are hired. All right so the company culture is very important like i mentioned earlier look for an organization where the culture is a good culture for you yourself as an individual and also for the organization yes betul uh, bagi i betul different company culture akan affect the performance it definitely akan affect um before i tell you i was in the company um that company, dia tak ada sistem. Macam Hartalega, I told you, I begin to brief you guys. Uh, we have this body system. So when you join in, there will be someone in your department yang akan attach to you to help you settle down in your role. And also for our engineers, kan, Hartalega has invest uh, untuk develop one team production uh, training department, PTD, where we develop a module of Hartalega way making glove. So, you, bila you baru masuk, you will have a module, you, you will have a reference to see, to study on the glove processes so they I can help you tau, untuk settle down, I can help you untuk adapt to the role. Because bila you masuk ke kerja nanti, the first thing yang you kena buat cepat is adapting to the role. Once you understand your role, understand the requirement, understand your goal, your performance uh, will be better. All right. Um, I would like to ask a question related to the question by uh, MPZ. All right. If uh, fresh graduates, uh, for example, me, uh, I got the job at a certain company and I feel that the company culture is not suitable for me. Do I really need to just force myself to adapt? Uh, I tried to adapt, but I could not. Do I need to force myself just proceed with the job or 
I should start thinking, thinking uh, try to find another job that made uh, another company that's suitable for me. Uh, which one should I do? We are, because as a fresh graduate, um, kita tak tahu uh, macam mana, apa company culture yang uh, suitable dengan kita. Uh, so that is my question because I like how the company culture uh, really big question. <laughs> um when you're working in an organization the environment is actually important you can only contribute and perform in a very good environment if you cannot get used to or uh, get adapted to the environment it's very difficult for you to perform period right you cannot argue about that um if let's say you are in a very conducive environment you have very good lecturers you have uh, very good friends uh, in, your, in your in your class the learning becomes so much enjoyable that you are able to learn easily, correct? Yes, but yes. you have some lecturers who are not so good, don't, uh, you are not happy with the lecturer, and then your classmates are also not so helpful, they only keep to themselves. You would not like that kind of environment. So your learning process is also interrupted. All right? So this goes the same way in an organization where you work. So uh, the culture, the environment is also important. So answering your question that whether you should stick to it and work, I think you should look for another job and move on. Find an organization, like I said earlier, find a company where you think you can grow, you're comfortable with it, and there is an opportunity for you to learn and grow. And you have a boss who can be a good mentor, who can coach you and guide you to succeed yourself. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Okay. Uh, do Miss have? Uh, all right. We have the third question. Uh, all right. Uh, from Idil Razali. What is your opinion on the future of glove and rubber industry in Malaysia after this pandemic end? Glove and rubber industry is here to stay. It is not going anywhere. Everybody needs to wear gloves. All right. So. Recently, with the pandemic, the awareness of the hy of hygiene and health has grown. Okay, more and more, more people start to use gloves. You don't find people wearing gloves in the in the airlines before. You don't find that many people wearing gloves in the kitchen, for example. All right, but now you see everywhere you go, a lot of people are starting to, to wear gloves. The awareness is there, so the demand for gloves is always there. And then, uh, um, you know, like food. Food industry is there. Everybody needs to eat. So you cannot say that one day the food industry is just going to collapse. Similarly, health is something that is uh, affecting everybody. Everybody needs to go for some, some immunization. Um, we are going through some uh, exam uh, to be examined, uh, ex examined by the doctor. So the doctors will have to wear gloves. The nurses will have to wear gloves. So the glove industry is basically here to stay. And if you look, if you're asking the rubber uh, industry and the glove industry, this is actually a more than a hundred year old industry, right? It's going to be there. That's my, that's my thinking. Yes, betul. I agree, with Mr. Kumar. Sebab kalau you tengok back the history point, uh, the awareness where of wearing gloves need they actually booming uh, bila HIV started hitting America. So during that time, kan, uh, glove uh, punya consumption uh, jadi tinggi. And then you think even the recent pandemic pun sama orang dah mula starting to aware. So orang dah mula very conscious. So with 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 the improvement in healthcare industry because glove akan you know lah kita akan su supply to few industries healthcare, food and even now airlines kan. So uh, the future of it is is I think will be very good. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kwa and Mr. Amir for the answer. You have uh, other questions from the audience? All right. Uh, from Nora Kuratel Ain Anwar. I am an economic student. My friends and I had a hard time on finding internship that related to my course, except for government sector. Do we have the opportunities for job beside government sector? Hi, Nora. I think you have the opportunity. Tapi, with this pandemic, tengah hit sekarang kan, uh, even like macam Harta Liga pun, kita hari tu, kita hire intern when, when MCO is being lifted, uh, we get the, the the instruction to actually 
uh, let the students go back tau masa March hari tu let the intern uh, to go back so dia orang tak boleh work so you nampak tak there are so many uncertainties i think for private sector so i think that is why uh, private sector is a bit hesitant untuk for for internship so uh, kalau you dapat uh, internship dekat government sector or anything uh, i think just go for it because and Jangan uh, rasa, uh, alamak, tak nak government lah, apalah. Every, everywhere you can learn, definitely. You masuk mana-mana pun, you akan belajar benda baru, you akan belajar adapt to working culture. So, uh, macam saya cakap lah, kita dalam keadaan yang when we are in the situation that we cannot choose, um, I think, it, ask yourself, uh, apa yang you nak? Apa yang you nak macam mana? Uh, so, kalau you you want to go just just go kalau bagi i yeah like you said certain uh, certain qualifications uh, you have uh, difficulties in getting job all right so again uh, we have mentioned this a few times upgrade yourself find some other short courses all right if you need to go for another degree or another diploma if you can afford it go for it so 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 you have more knowledge more skills that you build Right, and uh, for the, in 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 these difficult times, don't be choosy of job, but you must always keep your goal. Right, you will have a plan in the future, like I said, ten years, five years, fifteen years. You must have that goal. So you may want to do something for a short term. I've seen many students, uh, even while they are studying, um, they, they were driving Grab because they are coming from some difficult uh, family, and some of them don't want to burden their parents, so they would. I'm sure some of your, your classmates, uh, uh, college mates, they're also driving Grab to earn some earnings to pay for the tuition, right? And uh, this goes now, I mean, you've graduated, you need to upscale yourself, find something to earn. At the same time, you can afford to pay for some courses. Upgrade yourself. What I will, what I will tell, this is difficult for everybody, don't give up, right? Um, as the saying goes, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. So we know it's tough, but sooner or later, these difficult times will go off. But take this as an opportunity, right? To do something, you, you can see what are the difficulties you are facing. You can also look into areas where there's good potential in the short term, in the future. Learn, update yourself. All right, thank you for such an insightful answer just now. Right. Okay, we have a next question from Anas Yazid Anas. Which one is better for personal productivity growth? Long-term contract job or short-term contract job? If, if it's for growth, um, first of all, I would suggest permanent job below, okay? <laughs> because if you get permanent job, uh, you can get more, I mean, yeah, it's more secure, okay? Tapi kalau untuk growing, yes, uh, long term, definitely. Because during that long term contract too, you will be exposed to many things. And then one thing yang you all as a, as a students kena tahu, job security plays an important role for your future as well, okay? Um, kenapa saya cakap pasal job security? Because this is something yang orang tend to ignore, okay? Um, in 2014, I had my internship with an oil and gas industry and during that time, actually oil and gas industry tengah problem lah, I mean crisis, yeah, uh, oil and gas tengah crisis. I did not choose to continue because I felt insecure, okay? You, you, can, you can rasa macam kalau you masuk nanti, you know this, that there is this one term, uh, last in, first out, life for. So job security is also important untuk you, okay? So uh, bagi I, go for yang long term, study your company, study the industry. Kalau kat Malaysia ni, I boleh cakap, I think yang memang betul-betul secure is like maybe glove now, uh, semiconductor, kan? This is memang industry-industry yang uh, stable in Malaysia. So study dulu industry-industry tu, uh, tengok sesuai tak dengan DVU, and then kalau boleh cari yang long term sikit sebab takut yang short term short term ni kadang-kadang you tahulah masuk uh, ni ni di contract habis dia tak nak continue you so 
you you baru baru you nak start project you <laughs> baru you tengah settlekan proposal kan okay? dah tak sempat pun nak implement ah ha, itulah kita takut kalau you do, you go for short term if you you have if you are in the position untuk you boleh choose cari permanent dulu okay and then make sure emphasize on job security and then kalau tak boleh cari yang long term contract punya job hmm. But with the with the current uh, difficult times, right? It's very difficult to get a uh, open room job. Uh, so to gain experience, even if it's a contract job, take it in experience. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Miss Amir and Miss Kumar for the answer. The sound. All right. We have, right. We have so many uh, questions from the audience. All right. Nakib bin Muhammad Fashas Shi. Hello and good day to you. May I? May I ask, would you say that working part time while studying is something to upsell ourselves? It yes. definitely will. Definitely right. will. But it, uh, it, 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 sorry, it is portraying your character. It's portraying your attitude. It's portraying that you are a hard worker. Right? There are a lot of positive things that this is showing. So doing a part time job while studying is something that you can also add in into your resume. Betul. Which will show to your, your potential employers that this person is actually hardworking. They are willing to go the extra mile. Betul. And Nakib, my personal experience, I pun dulu buat part-time job, masa belajar, okay? So, and then, yes, I do sell that. Masa I first interview dulu, I sell that part-time job because dekat part-time job tu again, macam Mr. Kuma and I keep on cakap, keep on repeating tonight, When you are in the some in something, you part time job, ke, you buat something ke charitable work, ke, you akan ada learning process. You akan learn something new, and you akan upgrade yourself definitely. So kalau you are in the position yang you boleh buat part time job, jangan uh, neglect study ya. <laughs> jangan neglect study ya. So kalau you are in the position that you boleh buat part time job, go ahead nanti. I would encourage you to do that. All right. So thank you for the answer. Do you have uh, other questions uh, from the audience? All right. Uh, we have a question from Muhammad Hilmi. So during this pandemic, it is very little job opportunity opportunity for fresh graduates. Okay. Yes, Hilmi, <laughs> betul. Unemployment rate, I think, uh, hari tu I baca dekat Malay Mail, October 2020 uh, rose to 4.7%. 2019 unemployment rate I think 3.2, 3.3. So the gap is very high. So you have to be realistic. Memang I think job market is very tough for you guys soon. Yeah, nanti you guys get it. All right. Do we have other questions? Uh, or Mr. Kumar, do you want to add on about that? Or, okay. Yeah, it's the same thing. I think you've answered earlier. <laughs> All right. I've been told that our, the audience are very excited now and many questions are coming. Are you guys okay with uh, more questions coming in? Mr. Kumar and Mr. Awe? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Mr. Kumar, you okay? Definitely, definitely. I've got many. I, do, I, love, this, I love this energy from the audience. Good job, audience. <laughs> I really like this. This is very interactive. I, I really like this. I mean, UPM, you guys rock. <laughs> All right. Okay. We have questions from Rizwan Ghazali. Hello there, is there any ways for us to connect with you via social media such as LinkedIn? If you do have LinkedIn, can you share your username for us to connect with both of you? All right. Yes, Ridwan, please connect with me in LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Amir Sharifuddin. Bukan Amir Rudin, Sharifuddin, ya. Yeah? Amir Sharifuddin. And also, please connect with Harta Liga on LinkedIn, Instagram, and also Facebook. Okay, so connect with Harta Liga and also connect with me. I think Mr. Kumarasin, your your LinkedIn username was. Yeah, LinkedIn username is the same. Kumarasin Mutian. Just look for that, yeah. and you can connect it. Connect there with me. Yeah. yeah. And don't forget Harta Liga LinkedIn as well. Thank you. All right, so you don't forget everyone linking in a hard daily guide linking. All right, you have other questions? All right, from Aide Razali, a lot of company involved in glove industry due to COVID-19. 
how Harta Lega sustained itself in this competitive industry and what is so special about Harta Lega compared to the other major glove company? Okay, uh, for this one, okay, you have that um, Harta Liga, uh, we are the leader in natural glove manufacturing and we have the world's fastest and efficient production lines where we can produce up to 45,000 pieces of gloves per hour and a reputable glove company where we are always introducing world first. You can check our website. Uh, it's a new website just launched today. Uh, I'll just upload that in Instagram tadi, okay? We are always upfront. We are always innovative. We are always, we are a learning company. So kita akan always um, come up with solution to the industry. That one thing differentiate us from other glove industry. And one more thing, uh, one yang I nak cakap because Bukanlah sebab I kerja Harta Liga, I nak puja Harta Liga. Tidak. Tapi one thing I notice about Harta Liga, we are always, because you know sekarang ni every company talking about industry 4.0. Okay? And then you have to know glove industry ni, dia, the technology for glove industry, this tak ready made. Macam automotive ke, uh, oil and gas ke, the technology tak ready made tau. The technology Harta Liga, we have to develop on our own. Kalau you read more about us, Kita, kita are the first to do double formal production line. Kita the first to introduce automated stripping robot. So kita guna robot untuk strip glove from the mold. Okay. So the, this innovativity, this our very quick, I mean our, we want to adapt to industry 4.0. I believe kita akan kekal efficient and stay ahead from others. Okay. So um, macam I cakap, the, the technology tu kita develop our own tau. My 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 colleague, uh, all my colleague work sendiri and work with local SME untuk develop the technology. So technology glove because Malaysia, I think sixty five percent of glove uh, supply in the world, sixty five percent Malaysia pegang. Okay, and glove industry kalau yang paling efficient is us, kata Rega. And you know that technology tu is made in Malaysia, is a local technology by Malaysian company and Malaysian SME. So, datanglah, I mean, it's, it's good that everybody want to venture now. <laughs> but I believe with our strategy, with the management strategy, with the, our leader strategy, we will uh, we'll always manage to stay ahead in the competition. Yeah, uh, just add on to that. I think uh, Amir has clearly defined or explained why why Hatalaga is actually the company for glove industry, right? Uh, we know there are a lot of uh, many competitors who are coming in. So as I explained, we are the most innovative, competitive uh, glove manufacturer in the market. Uh, we live by our sh our shield core value. It's in our DNA, and if you put all that together. Um, even other industry, new industry, uh, new players are coming into the industry. We are still growing, and uh, what we have is everything done internally. Unlike uh, many other industry where they actually get ex external people to bring it in, but it is our own internal innovation. All right. So basically, Hartaliga is such an impressive company. So. I'm sure many audience, uh, especially students, would like to join themselves to involve themselves in Harta Liga. All right, we have the next question from Andy Tank. For Harta Liga company, is it require a fit personal or not purposely stated there? Uh, we do not have such requirement di dalam uh, our recruit uh, apa dalam our recruitment policy. Kalau tak mungkin kita dapat masuk ya. <laughs> Jadinya jawapan saya mudah. A uh, fit person, as in a uh, healthy, bila you pergi medical checkup, you are healthy, you fit for work, cukup. Itu tidak menilai uh, kandidensi, maknanya uh, recruitment by PMI ke apa, tidak ada. Jangan risau. Okay? <laughs> Alright. And do we have other questions from the audience? Alright. We have from... Um, Muhammad Noor Hisham, Imam and Aziz. Hello, respected panel. Since you just mentioned the opportunity is very low, especially during this COVID strike, could you give some advice or tips what our UPM beloved students should do? Thank you. 
All right. Um, I think I think we have mentioned this uh, quite a few times from the beginning of this session, right? Upgrade yourself. Uh, 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 equip yourself with the knowledge that you will be at advantage compared to the other uh, applicants, right? So ask yourself, what can I do? What can I equip myself which will differentiate me from majority of the other applicants? That's important. So look at your background, look at your education, um, uh, the skills that you have. How are you going to sell yourself, sell your skill, sell your knowledge to the organization? This is what you can do during this time. Okay. I hope I answer your okay. question. Okay, uh, Hisham. My tips is actually always jangan limit yourself, okay? If you are in the position yang you cannot choose, can be creative. Kalau you know, um, many other people inspiring us lah already dekat YouTube channel kan. Kalau you tengok all the students out there, please, please use they, use them as your inspiration. I think I did this one story that I watched the YouTube yesterday. This one Indian. I think dia adalah engineering graduate. Uh, dia jual tea, DKL dengan naik basikal. Yeah? Naik basikal, dia jual tea and they manage to earn quite impressive income. So this story sebab some people, they they don't have the privilege to stay at home and asking money from parents, okay? If you are in that position, makanya go out there, venture yourself into something new. Doesn't matter if you create content on YouTube, if you started, you know, Starbucks barista, if you want to work in retail, do something sebab Macam kita cakap, macam Mr. Kumar yang cakap, when you go into that, you akan always learn something new. And when you learn something new, you are upgrading yourself. When you when you have a better version of yourselves, I believe many employers will want you to become part of their team. All right, thank you, Mr. Kumar and Ms. Samir. For your, uh, for you guys, uh, uh, we mentioned the question is actually from... Uh, uh, lecturers that the lecturer that they know which is a uh, lecturer. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, do we have other questions from the audience? All right. We have uh from Naki. Back to the topic of working part time. We well, say working part time only is a good in the eyes for future employees, meaning that not participating in university or college activities. Um. We are not saying, I mean, I'm not saying that it is uh, working part-time alone. There are a lot of things you can should do. So what are the activities that you do during the, your school time? There, or, or your university or college time, right? There are people, there are students, while they are studying, they do a lot of uh, charity work. They do a lot of, uh, um, 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 what do you call that, social work. I've, I've known some students who are studying, but at the same time, they're giving free tuition to the underprivileged students or the uh, people who are coming from a rural area or low income family, right? So these are all showing the passion that uh, the, uh, the, the, the student is being very passionate, right? So these are some of the activities that can actually um, show the potential employers that this person is hardworking. This person is going beyond what is required of him at that stage. Right? Yes, uh, not necessarily working part time. Kalau you tak boleh working part time, you participate in all uh, extracurricular point good enough. My colleague ada yang dulu join football team, badminton team, uh, UNESCO doing charity job. So as long as you active, meaning to say, I I can't remember. I, I know I did term to tau. Uh, cafe, canteen, uh, cafe, class, something. So, kita tak nak this type of student yang you are good academically, tapi you kurang that type of punya apa extracurricular involvement sebab kita nak tengok betul CGP, nak tengok juga, oh okay, above 3.0. Oh wow, ada involve kat sini. Wow. So, itu jadi added value. So, sekarang ni, all the graduates, what you need to think of is how to make sure that your resume ada added value yang you boleh ceritakan yang make you interesting to the employers. Hmm. That's the thing. All right. All right. Uh, thank you. For All right. We have the next question. 
the questions are I'll stop uh, from the audience. All right, uh, we have a question from Nur Shahmina Binti Zokarainan. Uh, hi, hi, I have a qu one question. Have you encountered a students with moderate economic performance become very active team players during their job career? The answer is yes, definitely yes. Right. So academic alone, we, we have seen people who are very good in academic. I have personally seen uh, very good academically, no curriculum, uh, extracurricular activity. He is, a, you can say, a bookworm. But when he came into employment, this person cannot perform. We have seen that scenario, right? And we have seen uh, moderate people who come because of their nature, right? Their, their attitude that they want to learn, they want to upgrade themselves. That actually brings them up. And graduates out there, you have to know, bila you work, most definitely nanti you akan work in a team. So, by join, you, you nampak tak, the important time you join, okay, there are two people, introvert, extrovert. Even though kalau you introvert pun, you joining banyak uh, extracurricular activities, definitely your soft skill will improve. That soft skill is important. Sebab bila soft skill you hebat, okay, you work in a team, you tak akan ada masalah, okay? Dia jadi isu bila you are very, you memang pandai, okay good, but you macam work stand alone, yeah? you work in silo, silo mentality. That is not good because it won't be driving uh, the company. So that is why sometimes kita boleh cakap, kita tak cakap semua, eh? kita tak cakap semua budak pandai tu macam ni, semua moderate tu tak macam ni, tak. But usually as Hartaliga, kita tak emphasize on academic performance alone. Kita akan nilai juga other criteria when, when, when we want to hire candidates. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Okay, since we are running out of time, I will read only one more question from the audience. Uh, from okay, The question from Atika Raihana. Must a fresh graduate build digital pre presence in social media to help market themselves for job search? All right. Um, yes, this will definitely help. Betul. Uh, yeah, this you, will know, you, you know we have LinkedIn now, right? And LinkedIn is memang untuk networking. And you should know dekat LinkedIn tu, uh, there are so many recruiters there. Okay? So when you build a good presence, a good social media presence uh, in LinkedIn, uh, especially kalau you nak cari kerja, uh, it will be helping you. And also, you can ingat, some employers also do background check dekat social media. So kalau you the type of people, you tahulah social media ni banyak-banyak jenis orang. Ada orang guna social media to ranting, to complaining. If you show that side of you, the meaning to see your your image, your online presence is not that pleasant, don't be surprised kalau you find it hard to get a job. Okay? Online presence sometimes uh, employees do check on that because Kita nak tengok your character macam mana. Okay, so I believe, so yes, digital presence, a good digital presence will help you to market yourself dalam your uh, job search. All right, okay. Um, thank you for the answer for the last question just now. Worry not, those who still have questions for our panels, you can fill in the Google form via link that will be provided in the comment below. We will try to in touch with you soon. Please be reminded that at the end of this session, QR code for e-merit will be displayed to get your merit scan. All right, before uh, the end of our program, can we have Mr. Awardin and uh, Mr. Ame, I'm sorry, and Mr. Kumar to give the last advice to our audience? Do you have any last advice? Okay, Um. what I'm saying, uh, what I will say is the situation now is actually very difficult uh, for everybody, uh, including fresh graduates. Don't uh, give your hopes up. Stay motivated. Uh, keep learning. Keep trying. Keep approaching potential employers. Never give up. Keep your spirit up. All right? These are difficult times. Difficult times will go. The good times will come. Right? Keep upgrading yourself now. At the same time, keep trying to get employed. That's our advice. 
Betul. I pun sama juga macam Mr. Kumar. Keep upgrading yourself and don't limit your choices. Okay, if you are in a position yang you memang kena, you know, you need money to survive. Kan, betul tak? You memang, uh, you belajar, you pakai loan, you you kena pay the loan back. So, do everything that you can do. Be creative, okay? Find a ways to survive. You, you will you will eventually get it. Upgrade yourself, uh, stay positive, always uh, open to new learning experience. That's all. All right. Thank you for such an inspiring advice just now. All right. I would like to invite our panels, Mr. Ahmed and Mr. Kumar, for the photography sessions, uh, which I will be screenshot the screen as uh, the photography session. We don't have any photographer, unfortunately, because it's a virtual program. All right. Okay. Are you guys ready? Thank and you. Have... Thank you, UPM, for inviting us. Jangan serik untuk invite kita orang lagi. <laughs> thank you for having us. Right, we have also our advisor, Dr. Gap and Dr. Hazim, for the photograph session. I right. thank you, Mr. Ame and Mr. Kumar, for spending your time with us tonight. It's our pleasure, and thank you yeah. for having It's me. It's our pleasure, correct. So actually, we and have I the highest the view. Audience. I love the audience energy. I love the questions keep on coming because I do give talk to university students sometimes, eh? So when I see a lot of questions from the audience, it, 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 it is very, it, it, it's a nice feeling, yeah. Yeah, maybe we can we can have uh, 2.0, the next series, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have more after this. Really, really. Sure. Okay, uh, really. Dr. Haslin? Dr. Haslin, can you? Uh, Dr. Haslin? Dr. Haslin, but you see. Dr. Haslin dah gelap. Betul. Are you okay, Dr. Haslin? Dr. Haslin okay ke? Oh, Dr. Haslin tu tak kamera. Alright, okay. So, I guess ready for the... Hi, Mr. Amir. Hi, Mr. Kumar. How are you? Hi, hi. Good. Thank you. Banyak right. soalan eh. Mm, yeah. But it's good. It's very, it's very encouraging. It's very encouraging. Semangat kita nak jawab kan Mr. Kuma? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. I, hope really all the student, yeah, I hope all the students uh, definitely gain a lot uh, from today's session. And uh, I, 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 will, I will repeat your uh, your your quote just now um, don't limit yourself uh, itu je, jangan limit yourself because right, yeah. uh, I tak kenal pun Mr. Amin and Mr. Kumar, you know, this is our, my first time meeting them uh, but because I didn't limit myself email je kan uh, and then that's why I get to know both of them but for uh, and for Mr. Amir and Mr. Kumar, I hope you you belit belit lah sikit. Uh, jabatan kimia, jabatan fizik, UPM. UPM. <laughs> Faculty science especially. Faculty science. Kalau tolong lah tengok. Amir will organize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, we will proceed to the photography session. Are you guys ready? I will skip no, that. Okay, Okay, three, two, one. Okay, wait, and one more time. Okay, uh, one more time. Three, two, one. All right. Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. All right, okay. ladies and gentlemen, that marks the end of our program. I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Mr. Kumar and Mr. Amurden for making the time to join us tonight. Thank you, you're welcome. All right, last but not Sorry. least, I would like to represent the program committee to seek an apology if there are any flaws during the program. And also, we would like to thank those for making this program a successful event.
Yeah. Thank you and likewise. Thank you. Bye. See you. See okay. you. Take care. See you. Stay, Stay safe. safe.